<laughs> so yeah, so we, we we're talking today about about the um, the whole idea of of the word scattered in the context of of what we're up to and what what different ones on the pockets conversation are doing around Favorite Northumberland topic. and north of the Tyne area and, and <laughs> um, I, 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 I kind of felt God was was wanting us to to kind of look at this in a different way from a, a negative idea as well so let's just pray a minute and, mm -hmm. and we'll unpack this a bit and have a conversation about it so father we just thank you for this time and we do pray that you help us um, to uh, look to you to be strengthened and encouraged across this area in our different places where we're where we're, we're, we're busy and about things build us up and strengthen us in our relationships with one another in your precious name amen amen, amen. Mm. Yeah, so, so I think with pockets, it's usually thought of as a very negative thing that the enemy wants to isolate us and, if you like, pick us off. In, and um, I must say, it can sometimes feel quite a bit like that. We really had a, a challenge when we were um, at Easter time um, because we thought, well, shall we go and find some local church to go to and, and do what we normally do on an Easter and of course, we could have done that. I'm sure it would have been fine. And actually going off to a special um, thing like that, nobody would have batted an eyelid. But we thought, well, actually, we'll, we'll just stay true to what we're up to right now. And so we had our Bright River Chapel online on Easter Sunday. And actually, early on, we got up at dawn and went for a bit of a walk. And it was a really very special, actually. And... Um, that was that was fine and and I, I realized that there's a bit of a a pull on certain dates in the church calendar where you suddenly want to behave in a in a very different kind of church way to what you might normally do but we, we're sticking with being a bit experimental but it does have this drawback of sometimes feeling um, isolated and you think oh you know you could get really uh, picked off here if you in your emotions or whatever but actually, when you st step back and, and see the kind of interactions that we and I know yourselves on this call have over um, each week and over a month, actually, it's very rich indeed. The fellowship and the teaching, the, the, um, the opportunities to pray and, and receive and give words from the Lord and so on and feel actively involved in mission is actually really, really full on and I realized that in a way um what 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 is happening for us is is really the it, it's it's uh, got all the ingredients and elements of church but it's just been been um brought together in in a different way and I and that kind of cheers us up uh if we if we sort of hear the enemy whispering what, what are you doing you know what kind of what what do you call this this isn't church as as uh, anybody might normally call it i was so um yay just a moment just gonna pause <clears throat> but on the positive side um you know it, it's not all negative we uh that this idea of being scattered and mary you came up with a, a real thought when you said well when you scatter seed um they have room to grow and be fruitful. I mean, that's why you scatter seed. You know, mm. dump it all the seed in, in one, one spot. Mm, mm, and mm. so actually, although it may seem a bit random, just being thrown out across a field, mm. and it looks as if you've just landed randomly. In fact, you could argue that another name for being scattered is to be positioned, mm. to be planted. And, and in fact, in the, in the Hebrew way of talking, um, that's the same word, the, the word Jezreel means God plants or it can mean God scatters mm. because really what it's saying mm. is God gives seed scatter. to scatter yeah. is the full kind of unpacking mm. of Jezreel so it's it's um the it, the idea of scattered being scattered is actually to give us room to grow and be fruitful and I kind of know that in a way because you know we used to pastor a church and when we were very small 
it was um, it was far easier to make sure that everybody was involved. Um, you know, I mean, in fact, uh, because it was quite studenty, our treasurer treasurer was a student. You know, the, and uh, the, the there was a succession of students being treasurers of, in our church. But then when the church got bigger, and we had some um, the people joining us that were very lovely people, but but in their middle age period, there were sometimes missionaries coming back from from being being abroad, and they liked the flavour of being um, in an international mm. young persons kind of church as as older mother and da daddy figures. But but um, soon one of one of we appointed one of the older middle aged guys to be the treasurer, and and of course he did a great job. But, but I, I often then began to think, well, all these people that in a smaller setting, I'd have given them the job of treasurer and that a fast track grown with that responsibility and, and or whatever it was mm. that, that somehow I was, and I, had to, I was denying opportunities for people to grow. And we had to think very creatively about how to encourage and develop people when you have a, a larger concentration of people in a church. Um, and uh, of course, but in, in a sense, you could argue, well, actually, it's better if you have a lot of small churches yeah. where people are having to grow because of that. Mm. Um, so just moving on about, about that, really, um, just the, the metaphors of Matthew 5 about being salt and light. You know, salt is a thing that you scatter to season. You don't have it all concentrated. And in fact, light um, is meant to be pouring itself out on top of a hill and lampstand on the table. It's not meant to be all blocked in. So I think there's a precedent really for being scattered. And I just thought of some of the Bible examples of that. The, the Tower of Babel, um, Genesis 11, was a, was a scattering of people. Um, and uh, you could argue, well, it was a judgment because there mm. were um, the coming together in rebellion mm. against God. But because of that scattering, you know, in a way, God brought blessing with it because instead of there being this kind of opportunity for a united rebellion in which there would be a consequent judgment in a terrible way, instead, the, the, um, the, the people found themselves finding their own territories, finding their own tribes and nations across the world. And because of that, we've, we've got the nations of the world. But it means that if one nation goes pear-shaped, we don't all go under with it. Um, you know, if, if there's something horrible happening, people can flee to another, to another nation. You know, there's, there's actually some blessings in the fact that there was a scattering at the Tower of Babel mm -hmm. um, that you wouldn't normally think was a blessing. But in fact... It's, it's, it's led to, a, a, if you like, safety. And in fact, it bothers me, the whole, the whole idea that, we, that in the end, the future picture is of a, a one world government that's anti-Christ, anti-God. And of course, you can see that then God comes in with a judgment on the whole world in a very different way. Then it says that in Acts 8, verse 1 and 4, that they... they early believers were scattered by persecution from Jerusalem. So you yeah. think, oh, that's a bad thing. But it said those who scattered, who had been scattered, preached the word wherever they went. And Philip went down to Samaria. So actually, God really didn't want them all concentrated and stuck in Jerusalem. He actually wanted them to obey Matthew 28 mandate to go and make disciples of all nations, to preach yeah. to all nations. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. Acts 1 8 had told them to wait in Jerusalem, but not forever, but until they'd received the power of the Holy Spirit. And then they were meant to go off to Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And did they? No, they didn't. So in the end, the persecution was actually that caused the scattering ended up fulfilling God's heart that the Gentiles would hear the gospel. And, and, and so, you know, there's a, a positive out of that. And just incidentally, because they scattered, they weren't around on the whole. Um, a few decades later, when Jerusalem was sieged, sieged, besieged by the Romans and got destroyed, they'd already left. They'd already been scattered. Mm -hmm. They'd followed Jesus outside the camp, as Hebrews 13 Verse 13 talks about. 
So something that seemed bad being scattered was actually working for good. And I think as well, it's very hard for the enemy to eliminate um, uh, a scattering of people. You know, the, the, the Chinese church is a classic example, isn't it, of, of people in little house groups all over the place. Um, you can't pin, a, pin down that kind of model where we're anywhere and everywhere all at the same time. So I think that the idea of being scattering actually is a, is a, is a protection for, for us against the enemy's kind of strategy. Mm. He wants to regulate the, uh, the, 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 through tyrannical overbearing government organizations. And yet what you've got is something very different um, when you've got a scattering of people. And then I love the idea that we've all become kind of glory on legs, that we're, the, we're a multiple spread out living temples of the Holy Spirit. You know, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it talks about that, doesn't it? That we're, we're all temples of, um, across the whole world, really, uh, individually of the Holy Spirit. And together um, in 2 Corinthians 6, 16, it talks us about us, the, a we. We are the temple of the living God, and yet we're spread out. So we're like a multidimensional across the entire world temple. I found that quite exciting to think of. Then finally, I was thinking about the, the fact that right at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis 1.28, God had told Adam and Eve to have dominion over the whole earth and to go and be fruitful and multiply in number. So there was never any intention on God's part that Adam and Eve should just shack up in the garden together, you know, and, and use family planning and basically... Um, you know, the, the, whole, the whole thing would have been wrapped up in a generation because there wouldn't have been any kids and there wouldn't have been this multiplication. So the, the whole point of, of, the, of this being fruitful and multiplying required space to, to move out in. Um, so it's kind of beyond our understanding, though, why we get scattered, where we get scattered. And uh, I'm sorry to do this to you, but I've got a screen share here. That um, you're gonna you're gonna love me for. I did <laughs> physics at university, so there's a thing here called a scatter diagram. <clears throat> this is a very simple example of a of a, <clears throat> uh, a plotted points um, about a tree's height being determined by its, the diameter of the tree. So you can because there's a sort of a a link between the two. So although there's a scatter there. There is a kind of link between yeah. the diameter of the tree in centimeters mm -hmm. and its actual height. And you can almost see a straight line running through, running through it, yeah. even though it's a scatter. So mm -hmm. it's a scatter, but hidden. There's a, there's a hidden rule in the scattering. They're all conforming to. Of course, in real life, it isn't, you can't isolate two variables like the diameter of a tree and its height you know we, we're, we've got all sorts of things going on so in reality we can't um we can't isolate um here we understand ah oh, diameter of a tree it's going to be that height but in reality with lots of things going on um there's no way we can understand the actual scatter you know if i drew a map of northumberland let alone the whole of the uk whatever and put dots in of where all the believers are all around the place and and said work that out why they're scattered where they're scattered we would we would never know what to say about it and yet we have to be confident that even if it all looks a bit crazy god knows what he's doing and he loves us and he loves the people that he's put us in and so there's a reason for the scattering i like that and then another, another sort of physicy thing that I wanted to talk about, I'll just go up to the next one, is something called Fraunhofer lines. I don't know whether I've got this right or not, but there's a spectrum there going through blue to red. And there's something different about it. It's, it's looking like a rainbow spectrum, as you'd mm -hmm. normally expect light yeah. to be. But on it are these dark lines that on this diagram somebody's lettered that they're called Fraunhofer lines. And this spectrum has been picked up um, from 
sunlight coming in and uh, you know from the sun or it could be it's been picked up from a star and and these lines that are there um, are because the light on its way from where it was to where we are now has experienced stuff happening to it um, it's gone through certain materials or it, it when it started off there were materials in the in the star that the light hit and and so that there's these are called absorption lines basically some of the light was absorbed on the way but why i'm saying this is that the the light <laughs> that comes shining out of us we've all experienced different things and shine differently as a result so if you like god is god has got us shining out light all over the place this is my sort of parallel illustration of it and yet we're, we're doing we're, we're all different we've got these uh, different makeups of how we are we've got different experiences and so what actually shines out is unique and special to us so i thought you'd like that <laughs> <laughs> nigel did hmm? i hope you're impressed by that scatter <laughs> scatter yeah. diagrams and frown hoffer lines <laughs> you don't you don't normally get that sort of pockets conversation <laughs> but you'll 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 like the little exercise I'm about to do but i did want to say as a final point before we did the exercise um that we're going to do uh that really if we are in this position of being scattered it really underlines big time the need for good communications and networking for okay. support, support and encouragement you know I, I love that Colossians 2 too that in the passion translation that we've we've talked about before that it says that God wants us to be encouraged and woven together mm. in the fabric of God's love and that, that's the passions version of it but basically um you know we are meant to be encouraging one another and so if we are scattered we really would benefit from that and uh, to be encouraged and supported and networked one to another um across the geography of it all and so the loss of connection is needed and you can see paul in the new testament and others doing a lot of that they're writing letters to one another they're paying visits to find out what's going on to encourage one another well the thought about well why have we been put where we've been put um as a thought and um uh, uh I've, I've been thinking about this in terms of i've had this kind of thought before about um why it is that uh, people decide to put certain kinds of shops where they put them and but in particular I've often thought about how on earth people make a business decision about where to put a fish and chip shop. <laughs> because, you know, if you were a business guy and you were putting a fish and chip shop somewhere, you would have to think about certain things about the area, wouldn't you? And, and uh, what might be going on in that area. So uh, as a question, just for us to think about now, and I'm going to pause on the on the recording it says that why put a fish and chip shop here and i've put fish and chip shop in in quotes because uh, in other words what we're really heading for is we're not really interested in where people put fish and chip shops but why <laughs> why put a you here you know and not somewhere else why why are bob and mary bain in chill bottle at this particular place and nigel and susan are somewhere else and Adrian and Kanye somewhere else. Why has the Lord scattered us, positioned oh, yeah. us, planted us where we are? Um, and of course, we can't understand all the variables <clears throat> that go on um, in God's big spiritual landscape picture. But, but we trust him that he knows what's going on. But I did wonder whether there were certain factors to consider about where you uh, where you put a fish and chip shop and i think you'll find that if you think with your spiritual spectacles on you can get some very interesting answers out of this question so um that's the question that we're gonna have a little bit of a a think about now yeah. so why put a fish and chip shop why put you where <laughs> you where you are you know that the lord knew that 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 the the gospel needed doing so there's some factors. I feel like Blue Peter now that I'm pulling something out of the oven 
you know, later <laughs> on, here's something I've already made. Um, but the, the, uh, I put the others there already. I hope you can read it. Um, so actually, if there are other Christians there and they're doing a good job, I, uh, I think sometimes God will move, move us on. I'm just going to take, take along to the next thing because then I can Scatters. do the spiritual things. Put in red here. Others there already. Well, you know, in Acts 16, Paul tries to go in one direction. The Holy Spirit checks him and he ends up going across to Macedonia. Well, uh, looking at early church history, um, it's apparent, apparently, that um, the, in the direction where Paul was actually trying to head, Andrew, you know, the Apostle Andrew, had already been busily at work and was doing stuff. So, in fact, if Paul had shown up, it would have just, you know, it wasn't really the plan. So, in fact, it was much more sensible that the Holy Spirit sent him in another direction across to Macedonia and into Europe. Um, I've put here the, the how many people there are around. Well, in the business world, that would be a big factor, but God's really quite, uh, uh, turns things upside down, doesn't he? And yeah. he's interested in cities, but he's also interested in just the one. And he's very, one you know, two. he loves yeah. he loves that interaction. So I think we have to be aware of numbers when we're thinking about where are you scattering me, God? Um, because we could end up like that that South African Baptist church couple that um, Con and Adrian were sharing about earlier on. We could end up in, you know, some remote part of Scotland. Um, God knows the strategy of what we're up to. And in fact, in the Bible, the classic is Philip comes from a, in, I think it's Acts 8, he comes from an amazing revival going on in Samaria and lands himself in the middle of nowhere in a desert mm. and meets a, a guy coming along. In a, in a coach and it turns out it's just oh, that yeah. one yeah. Ethiopian yeah. guy was the guy he was to meet and in that story of course that man had who got saved had an amazing influence and impact you know people sometimes talk about who was the man that shared the gospel with Billy Graham you know because that one that one conversation um, led to Billy Graham's salvation but then from there um, thousands Many. millions of people have been yeah. Um, influence in a good way for the kingdom but I think even if all of those sort of ideas of that one person making a big impact were put aside God is actually interested in the one even if it's just for that one there's no sort of ulterior motive of you know why God is doing what he's doing then I think who likes fish and chips I've put here you know there's a, I think God is attracted by hunger for him. You know, um, he responds to our, our hunger and thirst for more of him. And you have in, um, the, in Exodus 3, you've got the, the people of Israel in Egypt crying out in their, in their um, suffering and in their pain. And God says to Moses, I've heard their cry. So I think there's sometimes there's a response to the cry of the heart that there's got to be something more. Uh, I've said about alternative takeaway options around. I've been aware of the enemy's counterfeits, which is a little bit cruel on all the other takeaways. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, and then how we present ourselves, you know, people are attracted by what they see. I should have put how, how the, the smell and the aroma that we, we, we've highlighted, mm. what we're, what we're, how we're being in our mm. outward um, way of being with people. Mm. But in the end as well, there's something about the inner life that matters too. Um, you know, the, the, the difference in a fish and chip shop or any other shop for that matter, if the staff are friendly. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, the, Welcome. you know, the hygiene is an issue, <laughs> you know, you, we've got some regulations in this country about hygiene, but it is a disturbing thing, isn't it, to go into a place and you, you're really wondering how clean it is. Um, so there's that, and then uh, parking, I mean, you know, I mean, come from ten, nine, ten years in London um, and trying to uh, stop on double yellow lines to pick up a takeaway. It's, it's quite difficult in some places in Northumberland, actually, to, but, but, to find yourself with a fish and chip shop with double yellow lines all around it. And um, of course, with the, the, it sometimes doesn't matter late at night anyway in Northumberland because there's no cars around anyway. So you just park the car in the middle of the road and just get out and leave it there. But um, 
it's it, how easy or hard is it to get hold of us? Um, you know, because we're the best one in the world. If um, you know, if people want fish and chips, and and the place is difficult to 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 get at, um, then there's a problem. Or the the, the the hours when it's open is only on Friday for two hours, around about seven o'clock, and that's it. So that's how how available we are. Really, yeah, well, that's it. it yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then footfall, you know, um, where we are. I was in, quite struck by Proverbs eight, you know, that wisdom isn't sort of something hard to find in the Bible. Anybody can ask for wisdom. And Proverbs 8 talks about wisdom calling out in the streets. You know, so, so if you like, God's interested in getting out into where people are. Um, and, and he's there calling out um, to people where they are, not um, expecting yeah. them to find some Fine. hidden door yeah. and go up some alley and knock three times and then you might you might find the secret way in um you know we have had experiences of churches like that actually where the, the, the uh, a house church group where it took us it took us three weeks to finally go on sunday after they'd kind of approved us and and, um, and they were a bit put out when we said well we're only visiting you know they, they'd spent like three weeks betting us to let us in through the door and i thought what kind of mission is this <laughs> So the footfall kind of matters. And then the last one as a thought is God knows, well, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but God knows what we don't. So what might look like a completely abandoned place where he's dumped you could end up being the best place of all. Ah, what do I do here? Um, so, so um, it, it, you know, there, there might be something we don't know that God knows about what's about to happen. You know, perhaps the place is about to be turned into a new town. I'm sure Harlow, just before they built the new town, thought it's like, what a nice, quiet little village we've got here. And then suddenly it becomes Harlow, a new town, covered in roundabouts and a few people. You know, it's... it's <laughs> Lots of people. <laughs> God, God, so God knows what we don't. I mean, opposite yeah. us, we've been very pleased in a sense. We, we reconciled ourselves, but we were very... We, took, we bought this house knowing that there would be people... Um, houses being built opposite, opposite. us yeah. and so we, we we feel that that's a good good thing um, we might have walked into this blind and not known that you know mm. um, building was going to happen opposite us but God knows what we don't know and I think that's very comforting to know that he does hold us at, at the future in his hands yeah. um, our future in yeah. his hands and so what might appear like a very bad scattering decision why I am where why yeah, am I where I am, <laughs> am. it's maybe because of the future and, and um, yeah. I, I don't think it's all about yeah. an outward harvest I think it's also um, God's concern for our souls our own personal growth and fruitfulness in him it, so that there is two aspects to this idea of being fruitful there's a fruitfulness in in being positioned in a way where we can help and bless other people but also God knows that we might need to be in a certain place in order to, to find healing, to find uh, a place which we can handle. You know, uh, it, it, the, the, you know the, um, what's it? Teen Challenge comes to mind, where they have these farms in the middle of nowhere where they take people to, um, to work through addiction issues. You know, they're, they're there really to, to grow in the Lord in an environment that's, that's going to be helpful, a framework that's going to be helpful to them. Um, and it's in the middle of nowhere and they could say to us oh, well, why am I here in the middle of nowhere but there's a, another agenda going on so there you go so I'll stop there on scattering and um, perhaps for the last few minutes we could perhaps just open up in prayer but I don't know if there's any any thoughts that additional thoughts to just come out before we switch the recording off on that mm. Mm. Just, just the thought that really that church is, should be, should, be uh, should have that idea that they actually grow people but they're also constantly sending people as well rather than just having a, a merry-go-round within the building it needs to <laughs> it, it needs to be a Churches need to be 
ascending ministry. Mm. Yeah, be outward looking. Mm. Yeah. Outward looking. Yeah. I was trying to say that as politely as possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I mean, we've all been in different experiences of churches over many years. And so, um, it, it, you know, what the, some of the things we're talking about may not apply uh, in terms of scattering positioning um, uh, plans that the Lord might have if you're 20 years old and you just become a Christian, which is what, you know, happened with us. There was stuff to work through. And, um, you know, the... No, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll um, that's, that's a, I think that's an important point because of obviously we're, we're coming at a, at a particular stage in our Christian walk. And, and so there are things that in the way in which he's scattering us, positioning us now, that wouldn't have been factors 40 odd years ago. It would have been a different configuration. You know, you're, you were talking Susan earlier on, weren't you? Um, just 